Mr. Cuellar. Chairwoman, um, again, Dr. Shaw, thank you so much for the work that you do, and I know setting priorities for your agency must be very difficult under this financial times, but I do want to ask you a uh, pr ask your process and, and setting priorities uh, for Latin America, in particular uh, the Republic of Mexico. Um, as you know, the U.S. Congress is going to be um, considering an uh, immigration bill. Uh, a lot of folks that come across to my district in South Texas are, are people from Mexico and other parts of the world. Um, every year we send back to Mexico 25 to $30 billion of uh, money back to, because of the drugs that are consumed in the United States. Uh, keep in mind that the, the U.S. and Mexico have about a 2,000-mile border. Um, if you look at what's happened in Mexico and the amount of dollars, well, let's say, look at the billions of dollars that we set up for border security on the U.S. side. Wouldn't it make sense, and I understand your, I know what your answer is going to be, but doesn't it make sense that we spend a little bit more money and assistance, provide assistance to countries like Mexico uh, because of the reasons I just gave you, number one. Uh, number two, uh, you know, you're about to do one of the biggest rule of law programs uh, in the world, but at the same time, your aid to Latin American has been cut, uh, has been cut. Uh, you know, we know what the problem is there, uh, the judiciary, uh, the prosecutorial, uh, the uh, prison systems in Nuevo Laredo, for example, just recently 150 prisoners escaped. Um, probably the drug dealers were trying to refer, refer to their, 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 their manpower. The joke was, why 150? Because that's all the buses they could have to carry the people. Uh, when a prosecutor wants to get you here in the United States, he has a he or she has a 95% chance of convicting you. Uh, in Mexico, if the police get you, uh, the conviction rate is less than a 2%. Less than a 2%. And then we know what happens when they end up in prison. A lot of them escape. So uh, my, my thing, doesn't it common sense uh, say that with all the billions of dollars we have for border security, we're about to do an immigration reform. Doesn't it make sense that we put a little bit of money, uh, like the old uh, commercial used to say, uh, uh, you know, invest a little bit of money here, it'll pay off later, or if you don't pay now, you're going to be paying much later. What am I missing here? I just don't understand. And, and I know what your answer is going to be, but I, I just want to know what your thought process is on this one. And, and by the way, you know, Mexico, the new president, Peña Nieto, is going through, um, um, they just did an educational reform, major educational reform. They did a labor reform. Uh, I know they hit a little snack on their, on uh, what they're going to do, the banking reform, the telecommunications. They're going through a lot of uh, uh, transformation right now under uh, Enrique Peña Nieto. Uh, help me understand your thought process, why not put a little bit of uh, extra assistance uh, would save us a lot of money on immigration and border security and the $25, $30 billion of, of uh, profits that we send back to Mexico every year on, on drugs. It, help me understand, and I know what your answer is going to be, but I want to hear it from you. Well, uh, Representative Crow, thank you for your comments I, I, and for your uh, longstanding leadership on this issue. I, I just want to say that the basic premise of transforming crime and justice in Mexico would, without question, yield tens of billions of dollars of benefit to the United States virtually immediately. So the, the basic premise I, I fully agree with. The capacity of our government through foreign assistance to achieve that outcome is where I might uh, take some issue. Now we've, we've had, we're presenting a budget with an overall 6% reduction across all accounts, uh, cognizant of the, of the times we live in and the budget realities we face. Despite that, in the region of Latin America overall, we have a 29% increase in the Central American Regional Security Initiative, which we have strong data to demonstrate has been effective and working. Uh, we have a, a strong commitment to Haiti. And we've, we're expanding our democratic governance and security initiatives in many countries uh, as, in, and in the context of Mexico. The rule of law program, I'm glad you mentioned, because we've seen data that shows where we offer some technical assistance and partner where the, our Mexican colleagues, their municipalities, when they want to work with us, uh, we see a big increase in the number of prosecutions and the rate and a, a sharp de decrease in delays versus those that don't. So 
that's the defining feature of why we're kind of narrowing and focusing on rule of law and partnerships in, in, just, in criminal justice. And, um, and, you know, the other things that we did reduce investment in with respect to helping Mexico with economic competitiveness or higher education, we think are just not the core priorities relative to this desire to have a strong rule of law partnership. So I appreciate your point, and, and I think we're trying to implement that given the context uh, we're in and given that most of the investment in this comes from the Mexicans and from their, uh, their own revenue. All right. Thank you.